Perfect, thanks Jack. So hi everyone, I'm Becky from Edge Hill. Uh, we are a campus-based university. We are based in Ormskirk. So in terms of what I'll be talking through today, quite a few things really about how you can support your uh, student through higher education in terms of the decision-making process. So we'll talk about the options that students have after leaving sixth form or college. It might not be higher education, but if it is, what are the benefits of going on to university and how can students choose the right course and the right university for them as well? We'll have a look at things like accommodation. So what options do students have if they would like to go and live away from home and also what student support is available to them during their time at university? And then we'll just finish up with a few top tips. So as Jack said, really happy to answer any questions you have at all. So do send them through and we can come around to that at the end. So in terms of what options students have after leaving sixth form or college, there is lots of choice available to them. So it might be going to university, it might be going off into the world of work, the armed forces. In other years, perhaps it might be study abroad and fingers crossed, you know, we can get back to that as soon as possible. Um, and then you also have your options like apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships as well. So degree apprenticeships are something that we have seen increasing in number in recent years and are set to continue to increase in terms of the choice and the number that are available. But they are essentially a way that students can combine studying part time at university alongside getting work experience as well. So students will still get a degree at the end of the apprenticeship, usually either a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. And they can take a little bit longer because obviously you've got that work experience to fit in as well. So anywhere between three and six years. So those are the kind of options that students have. And I think the first piece of advice is it's really important for them to think about what is the best choice for them. So spend some time kind of, you know, encouraging them to think about which one do they see themselves most suited to, because it is going to be a fair few years in that choice, whatever that choice is they're making. If perhaps your son or daughter is a little bit confused about whether or not university is right for them, there are lots of benefits to going to university. So, of course, students who go and gain a degree will then have access to graduate jobs. So there's lots of jobs out there that students won't be able to do unless they have a degree. So it just means they're keeping their options really open. There is also quite a bit of research that compares graduate earnings to the earnings of non-graduates, which I think is interesting to have a look at. And back in 2018, um, research from the DfE, the Department for Education, showed that on average, graduates are earning about £10,000 more per year than a non-graduate. So that might be something that you want to encourage your students to have a look into as well. And then, of course, there's all the other benefits that you get from going to university. So things like gaining confidence, building up those transferable skills, so not just the subject knowledge, but the skills that are really important for the world of work and the world of employment. And actually loads of students, I think myself included, found that their time at university was great in the wider sense. So things like gaining confidence and gaining independence, learning how to live perhaps away from home, making new friends, all of those kind of things that come as part and parcel of the university experience as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So lots of benefits of choosing higher education if that's what your son or daughter thinks is the right thing for them. A couple of things I think to take a look at. Um, so you might kind of be reading the media and, and doing some research about whether higher education is, is a good thing to do. And there are lots of things out there. So you might hear people saying, but everyone has a degree these days. So, you know, is it actually worth going to university? And back in 2017, about 40% of the UK population had a degree. So if your student does choose to go away and get a degree, what they'll be finding is that actually they're putting themselves into a minority of the population who have that qualification. You might hear people say, unless you go to university and you do one of the subjects that directly leads on into a set career, so medicine, nursing, teaching, you're gonna to struggle to get a job afterwards. And actually what we're finding now is that graduate employers are looking for someone with a degree qualification, but they're tending to be quite flexible on what subject they ask for. So for example, I did a biochemistry degree, but all the jobs I've had since just say, we need you to have a degree, it doesn't matter what subject that is in. Um, so I think the important message there as well is, 
for your sons and daughters, it doesn't have to be a decision for life. They don't have to do a subject and then go into that field for the rest of their life. That was something I was quite daunted by at the time. I think that's quite reassuring for some people to know if they are confused about their subject. And you might also hear people say, well, you know, people go away to university, then they're graduating, but actually they're not getting degree level jobs when they graduate. So I think it's important to look at some of the data. And if you are interested in that and you want to have a look, there is a lot of data that is published by the ONS and it looks at kind of graduate uh, salaries and graduate statistics. So those are the kind of things that you might find interesting. But about 90% of graduates uh, in 2015-16 were in employment or further study six months after graduation. And 74% of those were in what we call a graduate level job. So a job that you have to have a degree for. So I think that helps to kind of look at some of that information and do a bit of research around it to find out, you know, is it all correct or actually is it worth looking into some of it that little bit further? So lots of benefits, lots of kind of advantages, I think, to choosing to go into higher education. I think something really important to think about is student finance as well. Um, we know it costs a lot of money to go to university, so up to £9,250 per year of study. But the really important message is that nobody has to pay for that upfront. So students are eligible for a tuition fee loan, and that covers the cost of those fees for each year of that course. And they're also eligible for what we call a maintenance loan as well, and that is to cover the living costs that they'll incur during their time at university. There's a couple of eligibility criteria, so things like how long students might have lived in the UK for, and all of that can be found on the Student Finance England website. So do take a look, but I think it's important just to get that overall kind of brief summary of student finance. You only start to repay the tuition fee loan and the maintenance loan once students have graduated from university and only once they are earning what we call a threshold level. So currently that threshold level per year is £26,575. So they have to be earning that kind of graduate salary before they start to make any monthly repayments. And if they're between jobs or their salary dips below that for any period, they stop repaying while it dips below the threshold. And that threshold is due to increase again as well next year. When we reach the 30 year point, so 30 years after the student has graduated from university, anything remaining is wiped clean. It doesn't matter how big that amount is, it's wiped clean. So I think that's also really important to learn about. So to give you a rough idea, a student who has graduated and is earning £29,500 is going to pay back roughly £22 per month. And then as that salary increases, the amount they pay back per month increases as well. So I know with student finance, we can get quite a few questions. So feel free um, to chat to us after or, as we say, go into the exhibition hall and find out a bit more about finance. But it is all on the Gov UK website as well for Student Finance England. Universities do have scholarships. Well worth looking into. Some of these you will be automatically assessed for or your student will be. So those are usually the ones that relate to household income. So what I would recommend when your student fills out their student finance application, there's a box they can tick and that says that they're happy for their information to get past the university. And if you tick that box, as long as you're obviously happy, it means the university can find out about your household income and it can automatically assess whether you're eligible for any scholarships. So I definitely would recommend doing that um, if you're happy to do so. But there's also scholarships that you have to actively apply for. So definitely encourage your son or daughter to do some research when they're looking at universities. They could be things like sports scholarships. It could be excellent scholarships. So we have one at Edge Hill that kind of hones in on excellence in performing arts or volunteering or business or enterprise. So encourage them to look at those sort of things. And there's also often scholarships for level three performance. So performance in BTEC or A-level as well. So definitely make that a part of your research because they are non-repayable and students get them in addition to their maintenance loan and their tuition fee loan as well. So if your son or daughter does decide, yes, university is definitely for me, I really want to go, the first thing to do is choose a course. And I definitely would recommend doing that first. So choose the course before choosing the university. It's really important the course is exactly what they're interested in. So that's why we recommend doing that. So across the UK, 
According to UCAS, there are almost 35,000 different undergraduate degrees, and that is at nearly 350 different higher education institutions. So loads of choice, which is, which is a fantastic thing, but I know that when I made my choices, I actually found that really overwhelming because there was just so much to pick from and I didn't really know where to start. So there are options where students can pick more than one subject if that's of interest. So they can either pick what we call single honours, which is just the one subject, or they can do a joint honours where they do two subjects in an even weighting, or they can do one which is kind of like a major or minor. So a 75% of one subject and a 25% of the other. So most universities will offer some sort of joint honours or some sort of major minor option. And some offer it really flexibly where you can kind of pick two subjects and you get your own choice as to how you combine them together. So that's something if your son or daughter is struggling to choose their subject. And then, of course, you've got the type of degree they're choosing as well. So things like BSc, BA, just standing for Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. So you might get questions from your son or daughter about what does that mean? And all it means is just the type of content they're gonna study on their degree basically. So is it more science-y, is it more arts-based? And you might see different abbreviations depending on the particular type of degree that your son or daughter is doing as well. So in terms of whittling down that choice and deciding what is gonna be right for them, what sort of things can you encourage them to think about? The first thing I'd recommend is module choices. That's really important because you could look at a geography course at one uni and it could be totally different to a geography course at another university in terms of the content of the modules. So all universities will have on their website for each course a full module list. So your son or daughter can have a little read through and just check that it actually sounds like something they're interested in first of all. So that's the first place that I would recommend starting. And then there's lots of other things to think about as well. So would they like to do things like study abroad? Would they like to do a year in industry, a placement year? Would they like to do summer internships? How do they learn best? Are they somebody who really likes to be quite hands on? In which case would a more practical university course suit them better, maybe with some placements? Or do they really enjoy that theoretical learning and would be quite happy to be doing a lot of time kind of reading and researching? And that will happen on any course. They're always going to have to do some reading and researching, but it might be they have lots of contact time or they might have kind of 10 hours or so a week of contact time and a lot of independent study. So those are the kind of things that they'll need to think about as well. They also might want to think about how they're assessed. So some students we know can get quite nervous about exams. There are degree courses out there that don't have any exams on them at all. We have quite a few at Edge Hill. And there are some that will have different methods of assessment. So practical assessments, things like assessed workshops or seminars. So that can be a really important part of the decision making process. And often universities will put information on how the course is assessed on their website as well. And then, of course, you might want to have a look at things like reputation. Has the university won any awards? What's important to your son or daughter? Those are the kind of areas that they might want to start looking at. So in terms of how they would learn, we've mentioned some of those differences. So things like the weighting of practical seminars, lectures, we've spoken about differences in assessment and we've spoken about the module choice as well. And it might be worth having a look at optional modules because a lot of degrees will incorporate the chance to pick modules that students are interested in. So that could be something that appeals to them if they're really interested in a certain topic in the field that they're gonna study as well. Entry requirements, of course, are a really important factor in where your son or daughter will be choosing as part of their five choices. So that can be done in two ways. Some universities will ask for specific grades. Some will ask for what we call UCAS tariff points. And the tariff points are basically just a way that level three grades, so BTEC or A-level grades, are converted into a numerical system. So you can get a tariff point calculator on the UCAS website. It will let you put in predicted grades and it will convert them into tariff points for you. So that's a really good place to do some double checking. Just encourage your son or daughter to have a look at whether any certain subjects are required at A-level or BTEC and also at GCSE. So some courses will ask you for certain grades or certain subjects at GCSE as well. So that's also important to have a look at. 
and of course encourage them to be realistic they don't want to do five choices that are all very ambitious and then find that they actually haven't got those grades that they needed when it comes to results day so try and encourage them to think realistically about what their predictions are and where they're going to pick based on that as well this just kind of reiterates the point that i made earlier so I know that I mentioned I was quite nervous about choosing one subject because I just didn't know what I wanted to do career wise at all. And we speak to loads of students who are in that position all the time. So sometimes I think it's just useful to show to them, actually, you can do a degree in a particular subject and it can take you into a whole host of different job opportunities. And that is because of those transferable skills that you are developing at uni. So the teamwork, the presentation, the organisation, the researching, the critical analysis, that is what employers are essentially looking for a lot of the time. This is some of our team that you can see here. We all do the same job, but we all have very different degree qualifications. So we have Josh, who has business and management. We have Penny, who did sports coaching and development. We've got myself, who did biochemistry. And we've got Chris, who's done science and football. So you can see a whole host of different subjects, but actually we're all working in the same job. We're all in the education sector. So hopefully that might help calm a couple of nerves. It isn't that they have to make a career choice for life right now. So once they've chosen their course, the next step obviously is thinking about where to go and where to do that course. And again, there are so many things to think about when choosing the institution that is the right one for them. So in terms of location, that's really important. Do they want to be on a campus uni or a city university where things might be a bit more spread out? Do they want to be close to home so they can get back really easily or are they happy going further away? And what kind of accommodation is important to them? They might want to think about student support. So if you know that your son or daughter is likely to need to access a certain type of support at university, then that might be a part of your decision making process and you might want to ask about what's available at different universities. So that could be things like wellbeing support, counselling support. It could be support if they have a specific educational need they might want some help with. It could be loads of different things, but that support is available at all universities. So you might want to chat to the support teams about that as well. Facilities are really important, depending on what subject they're doing. What do they have access to use? Often they can be really high tech facilities, which is great. And what are the graduate outcomes? So what kind of employment are students going on into after they graduate from that university? So lots of things to think about. And this can all be done, I would say, by going to open days, hopefully when we're in a position to get people back onto campus again. Or in the meantime, of course, you can use league tables, you can use university websites, and you can attend kind of virtual events and look on some of the virtual tools at like the accommodation tours, the campus tours that might be on university websites as well. So in terms of university type, we've mentioned a city being perhaps a bit more spread out. We've mentioned the campus where perhaps if your son or daughter is maybe a bit nervous about moving away, campus might suit them because everything is very close together. So it means they can kind of feel safe. They've got that community feel there. You've also got the Russell Group universities, so they're a group of 24 universities that tend to have quite a big presence in research in their fields, so that might be of interest. And then you've got those that we call the collegiate universities, so places like Oxbridge, Durham, Lancaster, where the actual university is kind of built around colleges. So again, your son or daughter will have their own preferences, it's completely up to what they think is going to suit them. And the best way, I think, is to try and get that feel by visiting or looking online at those virtual tours. So accommodation, we do get a lot of questions about this and we get a lot of questions from people who are thinking about staying at home when they go to university and commuting. And often the key question is, will I still have the same university experience? Will I still be able to make friends? Am I going to fit in? And actually, I think it's really reassuring to know that lots of universities do have quite a few commuting students. So we have quite a lot of students who live at home at Edge Hill. And I would say they definitely still get a really good university experience. It just might be that they want to get involved proactively in clubs and societies. And that means they can still make all those friends and meet lots of new people. And of course, if they're nervous about university or they want to save a bit of money and live at home, that's a great option. And then if they do want to move away, 
they have got some more choices to make in terms of what type of accommodation is going to suit them the best. So every university will have lots of choice, whether it be en suite or shared bathroom, catered or self-catered, and these are all going to have different budgets that you'll need to factor in as well. So what we found actually at Edge Hill in recent years is that there is less demand now for catered accommodation. So we have reduced our amount of catered accommodation significantly. But lots of universities still will have this. I was catered when I was at uni and I loved it because it meant that I could meet loads of people that weren't in my flat in my halls. They lived in kind of different blocks, different flats. And actually some of my friends from university now are those that I met through being catered. So I loved that. And that might be helpful if perhaps you know that your son or daughter doesn't have a strength in budgeting, maybe you might want to know that their, their meals are paid for already. So that's an option. Lots of places will also offer what we call kind of like a meal plan card where you can put a certain amount of money a week onto a card and they can spend that and swipe that card when they buy food at the catered outlets. So that's a bit more flexible. They haven't got to go for dinner at a certain time. They can use it when they want to and they can cook in their kitchen when they want to. It gives you that flexibility, which is quite nice. But if your student is perhaps a bit more of a fussy eater, they just want to have their own food when they can and they're quite good at budgeting, it might be that self-catered is more suitable for them. Becky, you've got just about five minutes left. We get loads. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. We get lots of questions about um, students who are worried about sharing bathrooms at university. And this has changed quite a lot in recent years. So at Edge Hill, normally they're sharing between three as a maximum and the bathrooms get cleaned every weekday as well. And those numbers are really starting to come down at other universities as well in terms of how many they share with. So if you are worried about budget and you're worried about how well you think your student's going to have money kind of left over after accommodation, shared bathroom could be a really good route to go down to. Student support we've mentioned, and as I said before, this is available at all universities. There's loads of types of support, right down to financial support, careers support, uh, guidance for those who've been in care, disability support. As I mentioned, just double check with the universities what exactly is available. But this support is free to students because, of course, they've paid their tuition fees already. So if they want to access that support at university and go for a drop in appointment, they can go and do that without needing to pay extra in the vast majority of cases. So I think that's really important for them to know. So to finish up with them, some hints and tips. In terms of what I would encourage your students to do, try and get them to really make the most of their time now. So irrespective of what year they're in, they can start to think about their next steps, they can talk to their careers advisors at school and they can do some research. If they're looking for work experience, obviously at the moment it's a little bit more tricky, there are lots of things they can do online, there are some kind of virtual work experience opportunities, perhaps they could do some virtual volunteering, some telephone volunteering, if they need that as part of their course requirements. And I would really encourage them to make the most of extra opportunities as well. So things like summer residentials, they normally happen in the summer after year 12 for most students. They get to go and stay on campus, uh, circumstances permitting, and they get to go to lectures in their subject area and do a project. And what that means is that they get a good knowledge of their course. It looks great on their personal statement and it can confirm to them what is the correct subject for them. Same with subject case todays, they give an idea as well. You get to go to lectures. They're also happening virtually at the moment as well. And then you've got things like virtual sessions that lots of universities are offering for advice on personal statements, interviews. So do check university websites and encourage your sons and daughters to attend the virtual sessions too. And of course, in terms of their research, you can always order prospectuses from universities. You can do that on their websites. You can use those league tables that will compare things like graduate employability, student satisfaction levels. And there are also some really useful tools such as the UCAS hub as well, where students can research choices and get some tips on writing their personal statement. As a parent and carer, there is support for yourselves as well. So universities will do virtual sessions specifically for parents and carers. So you can have a look online if those are of interest. And you might also want to sign up for things like university newsletters too. So we have one for parents and guardians at Edge Hill, and that just means that you're constantly getting relevant and up to date info. So if you want to do that, for example, you can always chat to us on the booth and chat to other universities about that. So that is everything from me. I'm more than happy to take any questions if anyone 
has anything that they would like to ask at all. I'm just going to read through some of the questions I can see at the moment, but do send any more through as well. So yeah, we've got one question, Rebecca, that came through from Sam and it says, do you think it will be harder to get into university in September 21 due to students deferring their places this year? And then kind of added on to the end of that, hard to know what is media hype and what's true. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. There's so much stuff in the media and you're exactly right. It's very hard to pick your way through all of that. I think my key advice would be don't try not to worry and encourage your student not to worry about this wider scenario and how they compare to everybody else and you know how many people are applying for that course. I think all they can focus on is is their application the best it can be. Um, so I'd encourage them to start thinking proactively. Have they got any work experience? Have they got, you know, anything that can strengthen their application and can they maximise this opportunity to start looking at how they can get skills, whether it be virtually, whether it be any volunteering, just trying to think about is their application as good as it can be. I definitely wouldn't let them be put off applying because they think more people are going to go um, because I think, you know, that it needs to be the right choice for them and what they want to do. So I would say for them to plan exactly as they normally would have done, but just think about what can they do basically for their own application and themselves. Yeah, definitely. Great. Rebecca, I'm going to wrap up there because we've got one yeah. more session uh, starting at half past, but thank you very much uh, for the session. Um, if anyone's got any questions that they'd like to ask Rebecca kind of in the next few minutes, uh, you can head to the exhibition hall and you can visit the Edge Hill University booth um, and do make sure you check that out. We've got one more session uh, that's happening today. Um, and that is choosing a university and a course, which I guess really quite nicely links into what Rebecca was speaking about um, in answering that question. So I'm going to end the chat there. Um, and again, thank you very much, Rebecca, for your time. Thanks so much. Bye. Great. Thank you.